I've been using Heptabase for a few weeks now, and I figured I'd show you some of the things that I do when I'm using Heptabase for doing research. If you want to support this channel, consider using my Heptabase affiliate link, which is beneath this video. If you click on that link and then eventually end up signing up for a Heptabase subscription, I'll get a cut of that. All right, let's jump right in. So I'm going to start out here on this whiteboard that I've titled My Desk. I stole this idea of my desk from Scrintle. And earlier today, I was reading an article using Readwise. And so I'm going to open up over here to look at the highlights. And this is the text in question that I had found a passage I wanted to use. And it's this passage that I've made a, a note next to. So I'm going to just go ahead and drag this passage onto the screen, and then I'll move the uh, rest of the text out of the way. So, so this passage I read reminded me of something that I saw in the film Sicko by Michael Moore, uh, where this British politician by the name of Tony Benn, should have two N's in it, basically says something to the effect that if you can find money to kill people, you can find money to help people. So I want to make what I call a claim page. That's what some people would call a permanent note. And so I'm just going to double click here to create the note that I'm going to turn into a claim page. And I like to put a little green dot at the front so that these stand out. And the title of this is going to be Money to Kill versus Money to Help. And one of the things I do is I create a heading called the idea, where I will type the main idea. Let me open this up a little bit. And then I have a separate heading where I list source quotes source quote or source quotes. It should actually be quotation because quote is a verb. Quotation is the noun, but whatever. So I, I stole these two headings from uh, Bob Dotto, who runs a course on building a Zettelkasten, which is a good course if you want to check that out. So let me figure out the, the points I want to make here. I might speed this part up as I type this out. So that's the main idea that I have for this card. And then for source quotes, since I mentioned the Tony Benn passage, I'm going to go ahead and grab that from my Obsidian Vault, where I know it's located. And then I'm just going to paste it in here. So the full quotation, as you can see, Tony Benn says, if you can have full employment by killing Germans, why can't we have it by building hospitals, schools, recruiting nurses and teachers? If you can find money to kill people, you can find money to help people. And then the passage over here, I could very well just drag this into this spot here. And then I would be able to, if I ever want to go find the source of that passage, I can read the title or at least part of the title here. Or I could click on this and I guess I wouldn't be able to go back to the original source. Let's see here. If I click on this, that takes me back to the original source. Okay but I don't care about that. That's not typically actually how I will incorporate quotations. So I'm going to pull this out, put it over here. What I prefer to do is copy content because should there ever come a time where I decide I want to move from Heptabase to some other app, I want that content to be read by a separate app. And so I want all of this to basically be uh, markdown text. If I were to put this quotation directly into the card and then export this card as a markdown file, I wouldn't be able to see all of this text. If I'm not mistaken, I'd be able to see maybe the first few words, but that wouldn't be helpful to me. So again, I'm going to copy the content and then I'm going to paste it here. And I don't need this little note that I originally had made, so I'll delete that. And I also don't really like these lines here. Uh, so I'm going to do what I can to get rid of them. And there we have it. So this is what 
I call a claim page. And so I need to designate it as such. So I'm going to double click here to open this up on the right, which is necessary if I want to easily add tags and other kinds of metadata. So I'm going to click here and in a future video, I'll be showing, I think, how to create these tags, which are actually tables. Uh, I like to call them taggles. I'm sure someone else has already come up with that term, but if not, I am copywriting it right now. The title of the, the tag slash table slash database where I keep track of these claim pages is this one that I call me thinking. So I'm going to click on that. So I've now put it into that database, basically. Uh, and in that database, I have basically what you, what you could call regular tags or topic tags. So there are a couple topics here that I want to add to this card. One of them is war. And then another one is healthcare. And that's because although I don't mention healthcare, underneath the heading of the idea, it is something that's relevant because that's basically what Tony Ben was talking about. So I've added that. I like to indicate when the note was made, so I added the date there. And then here I have a type, and this is a claim page, so I'm going to click on this. So those are some of the steps I go through when creating a claim page. There are a couple other things I'm going to add here. The idea on this claim page is something that gets developed in a film by Eugene Jarecki called Why We Fight. So I'm just going to add here, see also why we fight. And I already have a card for that or a page for that. So I'm just going to hit that. There's also, I was looking recently at this information from what I think is called the Watkins or Watson Institute at Brown University about not just the financial costs of war, but also the, the costs in terms of lives. So I'm going to make a link to that here. I think it starts with costs of, yeah, costs of war. So I'm going to add that there. And then if I recall correctly, yeah, according to their report, at least 4.5 million people died as a result of wars that took place. Uh, by the U.S. in other places, so that's a heavy, definitely a heavy toll, assuming this is accurate. Okay, and then the one last thing I'll put here, this will make sense to those of you who have seen my old school Zettelkasten videos. Uh, before I made this note, I checked uh, to see where I might put it in my Zettelkasten, and I'm going to just give this the address of 6B. I might as well also show you, let's see here, give you some idea of how I am taking notes on PDFs that I drag into Heptabase. So I have this one uh, PDF. It's a chapter from a book, uh, and it's a chapter about terrorism. And what I will typically do is on the card that basically functions as what I call a source page. On this card, I'll put the, the author and the, the title of the PDF, a link to the PDF that I have been trying to make sense of. And then in addition, I have a link to this board that uh, we're actually right on. So the, the board is called Newman Terror, and that's the board we're on, and it's on another board uh, called Reading Notes. And what I will do, and this is what Heptabase is really good for, I think, is it's really good, as the uh, Alan Chan says, it's, it's good for not necessarily or primarily for taking notes, but just making sense of things you need to learn. And so in reading this chapter, uh, one of the things it starts off by doing is asking the question of how we ought to define terrorism. And the author criticizes some common definitions of terrorism. He argues at a couple of points that there's this element of randomness involved in terrorism. Uh, by that, he actually means not that the terrorist actions are actually completely random, but they're random in the sense that they're just trying to target people who are representative of something that they are against. So those people might not necessarily actually be fully responsible or in any way responsible uh, for what the terrorists are deciding to commit violence in opposition to. So once he comes up with a definition of the term terrorism, he then asks this question, uh, which I've put here, are terrorist attacks significantly different from a moral standpoint 
from the normal practices of modern warfare. And he basically argues that no, they aren't significantly different from a moral standpoint. So yes, you can make a conceptual distinction between terrorism and what's called collateral damage. Uh, but he says that collateral damage basically amounts to knowingly killing civilians, whereas terrorism is intentionally killing civilians. And he thinks that although you can make a conceptual distinction between those two things, terrorism and collateral damage are not the same thing, he nonetheless thinks that they are morally equivalent, more or less. And in fact, he argues that what happens in conventional warfare is often much, much worse than what happens in a terrorist attack. And then maybe the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll point out here, you, you can see these images. So after I make sense of the whatever I'm reading, I'll sometimes take screenshots of the board here so that Again, if I ended up wanting to move from Heptabase to some other app in the future, I would have at least this kind of visual representation. So let me open this up over here. Um, and so what I've got here are links to the sections. This is a section here, a, a screenshot of the section. So if I want to go to the actual section in Heptabase, I can do that. But if I were to export this note, this image would come along and I'd at the very least see kind of my notes about the the way in which ideas get developed in Newman's article. And so I've got uh, two sections basically for this article. And again, this is a link to the section. So if I click on this, it would take me there. But here is a screenshot in dark mode of it. Actually, I was wrong. This is me coming to you from the future, which is also the past. Um, yeah, so when you actually export something like this note as a markdown file, the images are not going to be embedded in the note itself. Those images will come with the markdown file, but they won't be embedded in the markdown file, as you can see here. This is what got downloaded here. So you can see there's the markdown file here, and then there's the two images that were embedded in the file, but they are separate here. So I guess I got some more thinking to do about how I'm going to back up these images assuming I want to back them up. All right, so I hope that gives you some ideas of how to use Heptabase for research. I have planned a couple of videos that I hope to release within the next couple of weeks. I've actually recorded one of them. Uh, here is the thumbnail for that one where I compare Heptabase's way of working with PDF highlights to LogSeq's way of working with PDF highlights. And then I also plan on creating a video about creating taggles in Heptabase. Got the thumbnail for that, as you can see here, uh, but I still have quite a bit of preparation to do to create that video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like, maybe hit subscribe if you've not done that yet. And again, if you want to support this channel financially, you could go ahead and click on that Heptabase affiliate link underneath this video and then maybe uh, sign up for Heptabase at some point. All right. Thanks, everyone.